prototypes and which parameters are passed to the functions, um, I coded a really small C program with only the function prototype in it. No code, only the function prototype, two brackets, that's all. Compiled that with debug symbols enabled. I got so-called uh, PDB file, and um, this PDB file can be used with a special debugger. The debugger is called uh, auto debug, uh, debug, and it's a product, uh, I think, from China. Um, very interesting product, because this debugger is visualizing the functions, the debug output, yeah, and also the past parameters. So you, have to, you don't have to deal with registers and memory areas. You can focus just on the functions. See when the function is called and which parameters are passed to the functions. So um, it's quite helpful to do that. And this technique is called API monitoring or function hooking. And uh, there are a lot of tools around doing that. From my personal point of view, auto debug is um, the best one because of this functionality to use PDB files. So if you know how the function is called, you can implement every function and visualize every function in the tool. And that's what we did. Here's a screenshot from auto debug. Yeah. And um, in this part of the screen, you can see the parameters that are passed. And I think I can let, um, get that much bigger. And here, one part of the parameters were the post information we found. So what you can see is the host name, um, string Cisco Trust Agent, the operating system, and for example, the service pack. And what you see here is a list of installed hotfixes. So the knowledge we gained from that was, OK, what information is collected and how is the information presented to the server? We need to know that. Because we were dealing with uh, um, DLL, the next step was to figure out, OK, how can we access the DLLs from the Cisco Trust Agent because we wanted to replace the DLLs with, with, uh, with our own ones. So again, we did some reverse engineering and just figured out the function prototypes of the exported functions of the DLLs. I have some screenshots. Um, I will hurry up a little bit. Um, that were the interesting functions. And so again, we started our C compiler and started to cone our own DLLs because what we wanted to do is not collect the information in the way Cisco does it, uh, just put information together, information we want to send to the server, and just communicate it back to the Cisco Trust Agent and let it transfer it to the server. Um, after we did all the stuff, we already finished uh, research, we um, already started our uh, tool. Um, I've tested the decompiler. Yeah. Um, with the decompiler, we could have saved a lot of time doing all this stuff. I know there are decompilers around in the world, and this one is the first one where I think that is usable. The decompiler is called Hexrace. I have a short screenshot. I won't go into details, but that's the assembler code, and that's the C code the decompiler makes out of the, assembly, uh, of the assembly. <laughs> From my point of view, it's the first decompiler that produces no, more than crap. Yeah? And interesting, it's built by Ilfar Gulfanov. That's the author of Ida Pro. The tool is actually in beta stand, will be released, I think, this month. And it's a commercial add-on for the Ida Pro disassembler. There are a lot of future stuff that is planned, like API support for uh, plugins to do vulnerability analysis and other stuff, do automatically function prototype recovery. And the main goal is that no assembler knowledge is needed anymore to do reverse engineering. 
If you're interested in the product, you can get more information at www.hexrates.com. Yeah, and just for Ilfag, if he sees the presentation, thanks for providing the beta version. So, quick summary. We learned a lot doing our research. Yeah, what is used, how it works, how it interoperates, and we started to code our own tool. So, we want to go into the demo now. So, it's show time. Yeah. I think you give a so short introduction okay. to the lab. Yeah, okay. So, we are still talking all about, about this post show spoofing attack, and we have our lab here. Um, and basically, I just want to give you a quick um, overview of the lab, of what we are using in the IP addresses. Um, the, well, central part, there's an ACS server which is running in a VMware in our second laptop, which is standing down here. If you, it's just a laptop running VMware. Uh, it's running on the 81.34 IP address. We have a router, a Cisco router, which is also standing down here, um, which has on the side connecting to the ACS server the 81.33, and on the other side the 81.66. We're using a slash 27 network mask, if you're wondering. It's not a slash 24, but slash 27. Um, then we have here um, the presentation notebook itself, um, which is the upper one. And again, in here there is a VMware running with our prepared um, hacking the Cisco NAC uh, framework. Um, Windows XP. So let's see, dot seventy, the dot ninety, dot sixty six, dot thirty three, dot thirty four. These are the IP addresses you will basically see. Um, and what we will then basically show is that if this attacking VM connects to the network just by pinging some IP address up here, um, that then NAC will come into place. Okay, we'll first just show you that the lab itself is running um, before we hack it. Um, and I guess we'll just start with the ACS server to show you the policy we've configured, the policy which you need to comply to to connect to the network. Okay, this is the ACS server. I don't know if uh, any one of you are um, familiar with it. Um, and in the database group, configuration, network admission control, um, configure, um, here's our policy. And basically, the policy says, let me just move this a bit. Okay, now it's better. And what this policy basically says is, okay, if you're running Service Pack 2, you will be assigned the token healthy, and if you're not um, running Service Pack 2, you will be, in this case, infected. Infected doesn't make sense, but it's okay, it's just for showing you know, that, that stuff, okay? Um, and maybe you want to just show that it's working? Yep. Okay, so you switch to the um, VMware. Yeah, so we prepared our own client uh, in the VMware session, and that's a typical Windows XP installation equipped with Service Pack 2. Yeah, and when it starts communication, the communication flow is going on, the information is sent to the server, and if everything's fine, and there's really a Service Pack 2 installed in the machine, we will get the Windows showing us, okay, your client is healthy. And all we have to do is initiate the communication. So I just do a small ping. Yeah, this is the original Cisco CTA installation. This is not a hack. This is just showing you, OK, basically the, the NAC is working. I can see Cisco Trust Agent user notification. Congratulations, your client is healthy. And maybe just show the router, please, just for a second. Um, Okay, in here, I will just do you a very quick show, you, you all, and you will see, you will recognize the IP address, and you see the IP address uh, dot .70, EAP, healthy, and the dot .90, the dot .90 is the presentation notebook, if you remember, and there is no CDA running on it, and therefore it's unknown, okay? Healthy and unknown, basically the two IP addresses you are seeing here. Okay, um, fine. So, I think you, yeah. So what I will do now, um, I'm pretty cool. I'm on the Microsoft Alpha, alpha testing of pretty cool new software. Um, and I have developed, in, I have deployed in my network Windows XP Service Pack 4, right? Because I, they gave it to me for testing. So, and Maybe so afterwards you can tell Bill Gates that we already have Service Pack exactly. 4. Exactly. So surprised. what I will make now is I will make Windows XP Service Pack 4 the required um, configuration 
for being healthy. If not, you're considered infected, right? So what I do, I just change the policy. Now I have to be very careful because this interface is crap. I mean, it's the ACS interface is crap. Okay, I change it here. Now I need to make it enter. Now I need to type submit. Now I need to type this, uh, hit the second submit. And now there is a save. So it's enter, submit, submit, save until you actually, right? Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Are you really sure you want to do this? Yes. Are you really, really sure you want to do it? And so on. So it's four, four times. Okay, and so now we have this policy in place, and basically when he now connects with his notebook, he should get an you are infected message, if everything goes as planned. So what I'm doing now is um, I'm just initiating the uh, communication again, yeah, but of course now my uh, notebook or my VMware session um, doesn't meet the requirements of the network, so let's see what's happening. Yeah. Alarm. So it works as designed. Okay, yeah. that, that was just to prove you that it works as designed. Uh, no hack yet. Yeah. Um, so he's a bad guy. I'm the good guy. I'm the administrator. I say, okay, we need Windows XP Service Pack 4. Um, he doesn't have it. I know it because I don't, didn't give it to him uh, <laughs> because he's a bad guy. So now he needs to sort of find his way into the network. Yeah. So what we did is, uh, or what I did is, uh, I replaced the DLL that's collecting the information with my own one, and I'm just copying the DLL over the existing one. So first step is just a copy process. And as you can see, Cisco is, uh, Cisco software is about 180 KB. Yeah, um, I'm a very excellent programmer. I, I can implement the same stuff uh, with a 20 KB DLL. Yeah, so, okay, my DLL is in place, and to make things much more easier, um, I'm using a small interface for that, for configuration, and what you can do is, choosing the service pack level, um, I'm more advanced um, than this administrator. I'm supporting um, Windows XP up to service pack number six. Yeah, but um, 4 is required, so what I do is I'm choosing service pack 4 and just save the settings. So the next part now is I'm trying to initiate the communication again and let's see what's happening. So what you see here is my own window saying congratulations, your client is healthy because I've sent the required service pack just as information. I still have service pack to install, of course, yeah. But I just sent information. Yes, I'm fine. I'm having service pack four. I'm allowed to enter the network. Let me in. Okay, just to show to you, to you that it's not a fake, we'll show you the router, so you can see again. It's we'll show the IP address. Um, it's being healthy. Okay, so just do a quick show you you all. And again, you see the 70 is healthy. Uh, I didn't show it to you in between. In between, it was infected. Maybe you can do that with the next, uh, just to show you that it actually really changes to infected on the router. Um, OK, so I'm, now, I'm, now I'm angry. You know? um, <laughs> I, I, he got into my network, but I know this guy quite well. Um, there's one thing which he never, ever uses, um, which is, um, where is my ACS? Uh, this is his, his notebook, not mine. We are showing this with. Um, but there's one thing he never ever uses, I know that, uh, that's antivirus software. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my network require um, antivirus software, right? Okay, so we go into here, um, go into there. And I don't know if you can actually read this, I hope so. Um, I'm just going to add another rule. I'm just going to add a rule which says, oh, well, um, trend micro, um, trend AV, protection enabled equals one, which basically means um, trend micro antivirus software protection must be enabled. I'm not saying which version, which dead file. I'm just going to make this really easy. OK. And now we see we have two um, rules. I'm going to submit. OK, now we see here we can read it. It gets healthy, if not, it gets uh, infected. And I'm going to go again for submit. 
and safe. Okay, and I hope my policy is uh, 